Hi everyone, I'm starting another series of lectures on time series analysis. Time series analysis is one of the important statistical tools we use in business. Frequently we use this method to forecast our sales volume, forecast our demand or predict the production volume and something like that. Then what does the time series analysis? When we are talking about time series analysis, we need to talk about two things. One is time, one more is data. We analyze the data of different time occurrence. Maybe monthly occurrence, maybe yearly occurrence, maybe quarterly, maybe daily also. So here we analyze data of time of different time occurrence. In this lecture, I will cover only theoretical aspect of time series analysis which covers meaning, definition, components, advantages and application of time series analysis in business. In my further lectures, I will solve some of the problems using time series analysis methods. Then let us tackle one by one. Firstly, we need to understand what is time series analysis. What do we do in time series analysis? It is a collection of observation made sequentially. Sequentially, not at a time, not one time, sequentially over a period of time. Here very importantly, we need to define time. As I told you already, time may be hour, day, monthly, weekly, quarterly, even yearly, decade, whatever. It must be in a chronological order. And time series analysis is a set of data that are collected and arranged accordance of time, maybe weekly, maybe monthly and so on. In other words, it can be also colored as the data on any characteristics, maybe weekly, monthly, so on, collected with respect to time or a span of time. It is called time series analysis. Normally, we different time which means we assume different time intervals in the time series analysis then let us see a definition of time series analysis in the words of Crockston and Cowden time series analysis consists of data arranged in chronological order whatever the data you collect it must be arranged in chronological order such as weekly, daily, hourly, monthly and yearly. Such data may be temperature of patients or number of suicides in different months and so on. Such data must be arranged in chronological order. This can be termed as time series analysis. Very importantly, we need to understand components of time series analysis which means a different dimension of time series analysis. There are four essentially four components. Two are very important out of four components. One is trend effect and one more is seasonal effect and cyclical effect and irregular effect. These are the four components of time series analysis and here cyclical effect and irregular effects are based on trend and seasonal effect. I will brief each component one by one. So what does the uh, trend effect? You may, you may have seen people use trend seldom uh, which means a trend may be uh, in an increase or decrease in any anything. This can be termed as trend effect which means increase or decrease in any data. Sometimes we plot values in graph or an average or whatever there you may see increasing or decreasing trend over a long period of time so this can be termed as trend normally trend effect means it is a tendency it is just a tendency in the values of data may be increase or decrease during a long period of time this is called trend effect as i told you already trend may be upward trend downward trend or maybe no trend also. If it is increase, it will be upward trend or decrease downward trend. If it is constant, there may be no trend. Here you can see an example of trend. It is an example for upward trend. Here in the X axis, you may see profits, profit rupees in lakhs. In the Y, y axis, you may see different time interval, yearly time interval. 
in 1983 profit may be around 300 lakhs and in 2012 your profit is 900 lakhs which shows an increasing trend so this is called trend effect then let us see what are the components of trend effect we have different components to analyze trend effect one is free hand curve method which is also called as graphical method because we plot data on graph so we call this free hand curve method also and method of selected points method of semi averages method of moving averages and method of least square in my further lectures i will solve some of the problems on moving average and least square methods these two methods are very very important methods we use in our daily life now let us see another component of time series analysis which is seasonal effect it is very simple to understand of seasonal effect if your data of the of time series reflect seasonal variation with respect to given period which may be called as seasonal effect here very importantly we need to define what is seasonal uh, seasonal may be quarter may be month or may be a year in any values in any data of time series the variation if the variation reflect seasonal wise the season may be quarter month or year this can be called as seasonal effect now i will show you an example for seasonal effect now look at the picture which shows weekly sales of air cooler here season taken weekly wise in the x axis you can see sales volume of air cooler and in the y axis you can see is weeks weeks may be 10 weeks 20 weeks and 30 weeks and you can also see the effect which is seasonal effect of weekly sales of air cooler which is a perfect example for seasonal effect now let us see components of seasonal effect what are the components what are the methods we use and a seasonal effect so we have four components one is method of simple average here we take simple we are simply average of data maybe uh, 3 years average 4 years average and 5 years average and then we will come to a conclusion and also we have ratio to trend method we have ratio to moving average method and method of link relatives in this lecture i will in my further lecture i will solve some of the problems based on method of simple average ratio to trend method and ratio to moving average method now let us see one more components of time series analysis which is cyclical effect if your time series data exhibits a cyclical trend a recurrent trend or repeating trend such kind of effect may be known as cyclical effect we may see an example for cyclical effect here you can see number of employees in software industry over a given period of time from 1988 to 2012 in this you can see a cyclical effect for which we have considered different phases phases may be prosperity recession and depression sorry depression from these three different phases you may see recovery that recovery shows a cyclical pattern which means that pattern repeats itself over an almost a fixed period of time so through this picture which is very clear what is a cyclical time series effect which is also known as recurrent effect which is very simple the pattern repeats itself over a over an almost fixed period of time may be fixed interval may be 5 years 10 years or 20 years due to different phases we face in business the cyclical variation in a time series are usually called business cycle and as i told you which comprises four phases of a business namely prosperity or boom recession depression and recovery so this kind of data we will uh, call it as cyclical effect in business here one more thing we need to understand there is no satisfactory method for direct measurement of cyclical variation the main reason for this is although these variation may be recurrent these are seldom found to be similar pattern having same period and same amplitude of oscillations so the cyclical variation are often obtained 
indirectly as a residue after the elimination of other components. So there are various steps to for uh, obtaining cyclical variation. So in this point of view, trend effect and seasonal effects will be basic. And let us see other effect which is irregular effect. Irregular effect is also known as random variation because of its nature. Again, as I told you in cyclical effect, it is very difficult to devise a formula for direct computation. So like the cyclical variation in irregular effect also can be obtained as a residue after eliminating the effects of other components. In the absence of other components, after eliminating other components, we will come to a irregular effect. Here, what is irregular effect? The long term variation, long term variation, we know the trend component, and short term variation, short term variation, we know that seasonal and cyclical component are known as irregular variation, which means, sorry, which are regular variation. Here, we can understand irregular variation by an example in this picture we may see irregular variation which comprises of seasonal indices trend values and trend values as a linear trend value which means there is a present of long term linear trend also seasonal variation in the data which is a mixture of long term and short term variation this is called irregular effect so i hope you are very sure very clear with the components of time series analysis now let us see what are the advantages of time series analysis very importantly using time series analysis we can understand we can identify that pattern in data so that pattern may be peak may be boom may be recession may be recovery may be depression whatever the pattern we can identify the particular pattern in the data set also we can have an opportunity to clean the data uh, that uh, cleaning data may be missing values some of the data is not available for year month or quarter or maybe gap in the data we can use time series analysis for cleaning data also very very importantly we use time series analysis for predicting the future as I told you, we want to know how much sales volume we have sold in the last season so that we can take a decision on how much we need to produce for the next year. What is the trend? What is the amount of trend? What is the percentage amount of trend? We need to increase or decrease. This can be predicted using time series analysis. So these three advantages are very important for in a time series analysis. And let us see where can we apply this time series analysis. Very importantly, wherever you need to focus, we need, you need to analyze, you need to predict, you need to estimate, we can apply time series analysis. So we use time series analysis in stock market, we use in economic forecasting. So we also use in inventory studies. Inventory studies may be the amount, the quantum of amount, the quantum of inventory we need to keep in the golden. We also use in budgetary analysis, census analysis, yield projection in the fertility and very importantly sales forecasting also. As I told you wherever we need to estimate, forecast, predict, project, desperately we use time series analysis in such instance. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you understood what is time series analysis advantages and how it works and why should we use time series analysis in business. These are the references I sourced for preparing this video. You can have a further study. In my further lectures, I will cover some of the components. I will solve some of the problems using some of the components of time series analysis. Thank you so much for watching.